Uh, Nelly Hooper, I've been a big fan of Nelly Hooper, uh, for a long time, since No Doubt, since U2, since, uh, Massive Attack. It's funny, the first time that I ever met him, um, I realized that my ring back on my cell phone was a Massive Attack song, which was pretty cool. So I, without even knowing it, I've been a big fan of Nelly Hooper for a long time, and working with him on this record, um, definitely, definitely made the record what it is today, and Fight or Flight was, you know, nothing without our team, and we worked so well together, and... And uh, from Nelly Hooper to working with Adam Schlesinger, who is unbelievable, and I wrote uh, most of the songs on this record with him, uh, I just had a really good time. And the, we didn't spend that much time in the studio. We weren't allotted a lot of time, so it was, it was a very fast-paced um, production of the record, but it almost made it better because we needed you know, excellence you know, immediately as soon as we walked into the studio. So it was... a uh, some of the best times in my life and, and I love writing music and, and I'm so happy that there's finally a record out there that I could tell you for every second of every song, you know, what it means to me and where it came from and, and, and you know, how I hope you feel about it. What inspired me most? I don't, I'm not really sure. I think the moral of the whole record is probably um, people coming together and like synergy and, and kids banding together and having a good time. I mean, songs like Get Your Yaya's Out and uh, uh, Gotta Believe in Something and uh, Mari Soul and 1 800. I mean, all of those songs are songs about, you know, picking yourself up and, and everybody getting together and believing in one thing. And uh, you have to figure out what that thing is from the record. I think everybody is inspired to write music. I mean, I was I was inspired by bands that I listened to when I was little, and I was inspired by um, the music that um, I would listen to in my house, and, and uh, my my brother and uh, my mom would play guitar, and there were always guitars lying around the house, and um, that's where I started writing music was on a guitar. The only thing I think acting probably prepared me for in the music was uh, a level of confidence. You have to not be afraid when you're acting and you can't have um, any regrets or you can't be afraid to feel silly or anything like that and that's really important when it comes to acting. Um, and the only similarity between that and music is the same thing when you're up on stage like tonight when I'm performing at the Dome. It's, there's a whole lot of people there but you need to have a level of confidence so you um, perform correctly and I think that's the only thing that really overlaps between those two careers. I listen to so much music and I, I love so many different types of music. Uh, it's hard to say if one person inspired me to start me writing music or something like that. I mean, I started, I mean, it's my brother's fault. I used to steal all his CDs when I was little and, and he was listening to stuff like R.E.M. and the Pixies and Led Zeppelin and, and uh, Radiohead and all that kind of stuff. So I listened to that very young and had no idea what I was listening to at like eight or nine years old. Um, but nowadays I'm listening to one of my favorite bands is a French band called Air, which is some of the greatest music you'll ever hear in your life. And I'm, listening to a band called The Budos Band, which is really good music, and um, even some Irish music, just all different types of, all different types of music, and um, that all inspires me together, to create something that's my own. Uh, at the moment, um, hmm, Damien Rice, actually, which I was surprised, because that's not usually the kind of music that I listen to, but I really like, um, but I, I have, is it, record called Zero and a record called Nine, I believe, and uh, my friend got me into those, and uh, listening to, like I said, the Budos Band and uh, RJD2, um, a lot of funk and a lot of jazz. Oh, Radiohead, for sure, that was a really, really great concert, and it was my first, because it's my favorite band forever, and uh, I saw them in my hometown, at, you know, I saw them at, uh, where did I see them, the... Uh, Oh god, the Hollywood Bowl is where I saw them actually, which is so cool because that's, I mean, so close to where I live and it was so cool to see them in a neighborhood that was like my own and they were playing in like my, which is really cool and I understand, you know, how kids feel about, you know, I'm coming to Germany and I'm playing in Germany and that must be so cool for them because I live so far away and for Radiohead, even though they started, you know, not too far from us, it's uh, it's so cool to have them in my hometown, which was awesome and the, I stood up the whole time, I didn't sit down, we had like front row seats, it was just perfect. Oh, I try to get tickets for the Muse Passion Pit Metric Show, which is like three of my all-time favorite bands listen to. Those are the three bands that I listen to their records um, start to finish. You can't, you don't really have a lot of those bands anymore where you can listen to an entire record. Like, um, I don't know, like Passion Pit, I can listen to all their records from, from 
first song to the last song, and, and there's no skipping in between. And those are the three bands that I love so much for that. And they all have a very specific type of music, and I can't, that's sold out in like three minutes, so I don't have tickets to that show. But they are playing in the Staples Center soon. I do have to play the acoustic guitar and uh, a little bit of the electric guitar, and I'm trying to play the piano. So I have a bass, and I'm working on playing bass, and um, my drummer is trying to teach me how to play drums. I have a lot of friends who are drummers, so that always helps. Um, but I hang out with musicians 24-7, so I feel like I'm, different types of music are always rubbing off on me and different instruments and that kind of thing. Definitely a song called 1-800-Clap-Your-Hands, which is third on the Fight or Flight record, and it was written um, last October, and it's been my favorite for a very long time, and it was like the epicenter of, or the zenith of like what I wanted the entire record to sound like, and I based that song off the rest of the record, and so it always leads back to that song, and when we play that song live, and you see all the parents stand up and start clapping, and like all the kids are kind of like, this is, it's a different style of music, which is cool. And uh, definitely live, because live it's more acoustic and live. You hear all the instruments a lot better than, than on the track that it is now. The track on the record is more of like a party sounding, but we have so many different um, versions of this song. You can play it however, however you want. A few of them are, yeah. I feel like um, that's just natural when you write a song. You kind of, you kind of have to be autobiographical at some point. Um, I write a lot about other people. Uh, and I write about um, experiences, but um, mostly I write about other people. <laughs> a few people, yeah, and that's allowed too. I can take a I can take a group of people or like a few people and pull them into one person. Like uh, Mari Soul off the record um, is you know based off of a few different people, and one of them even being myself possibly. Uh, right now, I'm just focusing on music, and I'm, I'm so busy doing that. Uh, I do have, um, you know, in Hollywood, nothing's ever greenlit. Like, you can be attached to something, but you never know what's going to happen with it. So I have a few things that I'm really excited for, but um, nothing that's too serious right now or that I can announce or talk about. Best memory from Hannah Montana. Um, I feel like over the past five years that we were doing that show, the best memory was always like the first day back on set after finishing a season. Like taking a five, six month break and then coming back and seeing everybody again. Those were always the best times because it was like a clean slate for everybody. I have, I have a few favorites from this record. Um, like I said, 1-800-Clap-Your-Hands is probably one of my favorites. Um, I love the song, um, Gotta Believe in Something, that's another one of my favorites. It's different because they all mean something different to me. The single for the for the States is Love Sick, which has always been a very fun track, and my whole band actually really likes that song. So um, it's interesting to get people's feedback on why they like different songs. And it's always different from why I like them, which is also cool. One of my f all time favorite shows was in, uh, was recently on. Um, it was probably on the Soda Pop tour, where I just did in Canada, and there was one date that really stood out. I don't, all those, I don't remember the city because we did like a million of them, but um, it was either Toronto or like Belleville or something like that, and it was just the best show because I was surrounded by friends, and um, I knew it was just, it really felt like a family at that point on tour, and we were right in the middle of tour, and everybody was getting along so well, and the crowd was amazing, and it was like everybody did just performed to the fullest extent that night, and it was just a really good time. And uh, we also had a lot of pranks going on that night. Like, we got pranked by a bunch of different bands. It was just fun. It was one of those shows where you're like, I really, really love what I do. Well, I'm, so I'm now in Germany, which is great, and I never thought I'd be here performing, which is fun. I'm playing at the Dome with, you know, uh, Jason Derulo and Mike Posner and The Hoff. Like, I never thought that would happen. But uh, I, I don't know, I mean, I, I'm, Surprise! No matter what, I'm going to Brazil, and I'm happy for that. And I, w I would love to play in Australia. My friends um, have in a band called Hot Shell Ray. They just played a bunch of dates in Australia, and all I hear about is how wonderful it is down there. So I'd love to play some shows there. Oh, absolutely! Um, I would love to do a duet with somebody. Um, uh, I'd love to do. I'd love to have like a guest rapper. Um, like Tiny Tempa or something like that, or, uh, hmm, 
Uh, white cleft jeans. I think that would be cool if I had white cleft on that. I don't know. Just I think a rapper would be cool, and I think I'd, I'd love to talk to a bunch of different people and see see who Nelly Hooper knows because he knows a lot of people. Right. I've never performed in Europe. I've been here promoting the record, and I've, I've traveled around Europe many times, but I've, this is my first actual performance in Europe. I'm most looking, I'm definitely most looking forward to this show tonight, because this will be very fun. Um, and my favorite thing so far, I think, in traveling was um, a lot of the culture that I didn't get to catch last time I was here because I was so busy, and, and now we, we're driving a lot more than flying, so we get to see a lot more of the cities and see some castles, and, and actual, I actually told somebody that here, and they were like, we don't have any castles. I'm like, yes, you do. I saw some on the way here. Um, but it's, it's just been a wonderful experience. We just recently saw, shot the uh, Let's Be Friends music video, which was uh, great for me because we got to shoot it at the beach and love the beach. It was uh, not too far from where I live, and I actually had about 15 of my friends in the video, which was really cool and um, interesting to see them in a music video because they've never done this before. Um, so it was really cool to like kind of be there performing, but also in the company of all of my friends. And um, I had uh, I called up my friend the night before who the ultimately was playing the love interest and uh, we didn't have anybody at that point and we were kind of getting really nervous and I was just like hang on let me just call my friend and I was like do you mind playing my boyfriend and he's like yeah no problem so we came in the next day just like ready to go and did it and then everybody went home it was very quick very fast kind of cold very cold shoot on the beach but it was very fun yeah I think the strangest thing about this video was um Nobody prepared for it to be. Uh, nobody prepared it to be so cold. Nobody really expected that. It was freezing on the beach, and everybody was supposed to be like having a dance party and like dancing on top of cars and things. Everybody was like freezing in between takes. So um, we would do the scene, and then we we'd be done, and everybody would like wrap in blankets real quick. And it's funny because you'd never know that from looking at the video because it, it looks like it's just a, a good old time. Everybody's very hot and sweaty, but it was freezing cold. Um, but still, I love that, and I love the beach. So we had a good time. Uh, I like to be very involved in a lot of different aspects of the music, and I think that's uh, what helps you become an artist more is if you're more involved in it. And uh, the way music videos usually go is you get sent a treatment from a director or a writer or something like that, and you talk about it with them, and it's kind of a collaboration of um, your ideas and his ideas or her ideas, and uh, you sit down and you talk about it for a while, and that's definitely how it went for this um, music video. Um, and uh, we talked for a long time before we got it straight, and, and the original treatment is nothing what the final treatment actually looked like, so it was very funny, but for this next video, I, I'm trying to have more of a hand in writing it, because I really do, I really do like writing the treatment for the video, and I like, I have, always have like a specific vision for a music video, and so it's cool to actually see that in the final product.